This is what happened to me at the Golden Gate Bridge. I went over that rail and I had an instantaneous regret for my actions and I thought, this is it, this is where I die. I thought there was no other way. Here I am surviving that, that fall. I don't wish that on anybody else. Don't learn the hard way like I did. Take the time to see someone next to you, around you, before you, and say four simple but effective words when you're suicidal. I need help now. What would you say to a person that's never experienced that? How should somebody respond uh, when they see somebody in that in that moment? And and what is it like for a person that is struggling, so that people that don't know that feeling uh, can kind of relate? You know, I think if you if you if you don't understand what it's like to feel suicidal or to to feel those thoughts, imagine imagine you feeling like your whole world is crumbling before you. Imagine feeling claustrophobic when there's no walls surrounding you. Imagine feeling that you have no other option but to take your life because of severe depression or anxiety uh, or an eating disorder or, or, or whatever the case may be. When you find yourself in excruciating physical pain, what do you want that pain to do? Well, you, you want it to stop. You want it to end. You want it to go and you want it to end. Mm -hmm. Brain pain is, is arguably 300,000 times worse than any physical pain I've ever experienced. And that's what people go through when they're suicidal an immense, overwhelming, overbearing, back-breaking amount of brain pain. Mm. And it's lethal emotional pain that leads people to suicide in all walks of life all around the world. Absolutely. And that lethal emotional pain can be stopped. It can be changed. It, it doesn't have to be fluid. Um, and, and even if you live with regular thoughts of ending your life like I do, you can always survive that pain. You can always survive it. Suicide never has to be the solution to your problem. As I said before, it is the problem. I realize that today. This is what happened to me at the Golden Gate Bridge. I went over that rail and I had an instantaneous regret for my actions. And I thought, this is it. This is where I die. I thought there was no other way. Right. Here I am surviving that, that fall. I don't wish that on anybody else. Don't learn the hard way like I did. Mm -hmm. Take the time to see someone next to you, around you, before you, and say four simple but effective words when you're suicidal. I need help now. And if the first person you turn to is unwilling to help, you turn to the next until you find someone willing to empathize with your pain. I have lived now 20 years with suicidal ideations on a regular basis, but they'll never take my life because I always say those four words, I need help now, to someone or anyone who's near me. And, and every time I've said that and repeated it until someone was willing to guide me to a straight place, a good place, a hopeful place, then I've been, I've been here. I've, I've been here tomorrow and every day after that, and, and, and that's how I stay alive. Suicide will never take me. I know that for a fact, no matter how bad it gets, I'll always ask for help. And asking for help is not a sign of weakness. It is a, your greatest strength. I, I love that. I actually um, have heard you say that. Uh, well, I know that your, your wife is truly like a rock to you. And all you have to say to her is those four words, I need help now. But there's been times too that, you know, sometimes you're thousands of miles away from her, you're traveling and you also are in that same, you know, uh, uh, predicaments where you need help immediately. And I've heard you say that you've turned to TSA uh, officers at airports and random people. Like, I love that you're so not ashamed and you're so real and raw and vulnerable to just say, hey, like, I need help now because you know, um, you know, what could happen if you didn't reach out, right? So I think that's, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. I'm, I'm not ashamed to ask for help from anyone. Come on. Because I have become what 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 some call self-aware in my diagnosis, which is hard to get to. It's not easy. I've been diagnosed with bipolar disorder type one with psychotic features by three different doctors. Whether or not you want to agree with that label or not, that's up to you. But that's what I've been diagnosed with. Both my biological parents, as I'm adopted, were diagnosed with the same thing in their day. Manic depression is what they used to call it. And wherever I am, I will ask for help. Yes, I was at, I was in the airport. I couldn't get a hold of anybody. I called several folks, you, you know, just because life situations couldn't get a hold of anybody. And I stopped the TSA agent and I said, listen, I need your help. I'm going through it. Obviously, I didn't make my flight that day. Um, but, but they did help me and they were there for me and they got me to a safe place. And we eventually got a hold of my wife and, and I was physically safe from my own, from myself. Um, you know, ju just a year and a half ago, I was back in a psych ward for suicidal ideation, 
but I walked to my wife and said, I need to be in there or I won't be here. And he, and here I am today getting this ability to talk to you because of that. Had I died that day, we wouldn't have this conversation and we wouldn't be able to impact the people that are going to watch this show. Come on. And we hope to have a massive impact on them and let them know that they're supposed to be here until their natural end. You know, I, and you may have heard me say this before, but I'll say it here now. And I, I want your audiences to really take this in because you're alive and well today. Even if you're having a hard time, you're still alive and you're still physically well enough to watch this show. If you're considering suicide, I want you to think about all the children who never made it past the womb. My wife and I know that pain. Our boy Jack Ryan lived eight weeks and no more, but he wasn't intended to be here in physical form. You all are for the simple fact I'm looking through this lens, you're seeing my eyes, you can look back at me, and, and I know you're supposed to be here until your natural end, never to die by your hands. It, it's, not, it's not the answer. The answer is fighting tooth and nail and putting in the hard work to be mentally stable. And it's not impossible, it's entirely within your reach. I love that. You know, I think it is amazing advice um, not to isolate ourselves. And so whether somebody, you know, I'm not a professional anyway, by any means on this, uh, but I have worked with teens and young adults for many, many years. And I've, you know, I've met a lot of people, a lot of hurting people like, you know, like yourself, you've met a lot of hurting people. And uh, I feel one of the greatest enemies is isolating ourselves, you know, whether it be suicidal thoughts, you know, emotional in some way, depression, feeling uh, thoughts of rejection, loneliness or whatever. And I find that when people tend to isolate themselves um, is when they start to buy into those lies, lies that no one cares, lies that they're alone, lies that nobody understands. We all have struggles. Um, and people need to know they're not alone. There's people all over the world, all over the world going through the exact same thing uh, that, that the, the challenge that they're going through. And so I love that you encourage people not to isolate, that you encourage them to, even if they have to go to a stranger, just let them know, like, I need help now. Hey guys, Roxanne Grace here. Thank you guys so much for watching Dream's YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a single conversation or new music from Dream. And if you guys enjoyed this episode, be sure to hit the like and notification buttons and share this video with a friend who needs to hear it. Oh, and don't forget you can subscribe and listen to the conversation anywhere podcasts are available. Thanks for watching.